Today, we delve into the notorious Killdozer incident, a tale of one man's defiance. The story begins in a small town in Colorado, with an ordinary welder named Marvin Hemeyer. He was a welder and an auto shop owner who found himself in a land dispute with the town's council. The crux of contention was a zoning disagreement. Hemeyer's auto shop was in jeopardy due to the town's decision to rezone the land. Despite numerous appeals and efforts to make his case, the council remained unmoved. His livelihood was under threat, and the prospect of losing his business left him disheartened. This was by no means the only thing that drove him off the edge. But this video is not about that. Disappointed by the town's decisions, Hemeyer decided to fight back in his own way. In the quiet of his own workshop, Hemeyer started secretly modifying a bulldozer. This was no ordinary upgrade. Hemeyer was meticulous, turning his Komatsu D 355A bulldozer into the infamous Killdozer. He reinforced the cabin with layers of steel and concrete, as well as installed weapons for close defense, but more about this later. He carefully planned each feature, making sure his machine was impenetrable and unstoppable. Every bolt, every weld, every modification was a testament to his resolve. After one and a half years of hard work, the Killdozer was ready. On June 4, 2004, Hemeyer unleashed his Killdozer onto the town of Granby. It was a sight of pure devastation as the steel behemoth tore through concrete and asphalt alike. Buildings crumbled, cars were flattened, and the town was thrown into chaos. Law enforcement was at a loss, their conventional methods proving futile against the Killdozer's fortified shell. The rampage continued unabated for two hours, until the Killdozer got stuck in a basement of one of the buildings it had destroyed, and Hemeyer took his own life, ending the Killdozer's reign. The Killdozer incident left an indelible mark on the town of Granby. Destruction was widespread, and the shock echoed throughout the nation. Public reactions were mixed, some seeing a hero, others a villain. The Killdozer incident, a testament to one man's frustration and determination, continues to be a controversial chapter in American history. But how could Marvin have enhanced his design? Well, what he did to it was already impressive. He welded a thick armoured shell onto the cabin and engine, added cameras and viewports for visibility, pressurised air systems to clear his viewing devices, gun mounts for rifles reinforced with bulletproof plastic, and even an air conditioning system. However, there were notable flaws. Firstly, the added weight of the armor exceeded 60 metric tons, and while the chassis and drivetrain could handle it, the engine had issues with overheating due to limited cooling caused by the armor plating and additional weight. The rear-mounted digger, though of little benefit, obstructed the rear gun mount's line of fire and added unnecessary weight. To address these problems, removing the digger and improving the cooling system with additional fanned radiators drawing fresh air from a protected vent could help. Regarding armor protection, the makeshift concrete reinforced steel armor was ineffective for its weight. Examining modern battle tanks for better solutions, incorporating ceramic or rubber lining between armor plates, and layering the cabin interior with Kevlar to catch any spalling from potential explosions, could provide improved protection. However, it's crucial to note that there would be no reasonable way to make the dozer withstand actual anti-tank weapons. With a small exception, if you could somehow come across explosive reactive armor, even the simple Russian first-generation Contact-1 could provide protection against light anti-tank weapons, like the M72 Law, that has around 300 mm of penetration. If you somehow got these explosive reactive armor blocks, they could add good protection against shape charges. In terms of defense, enhancing firepower by replacing single-fire weapons with light machine guns could significantly improve the vehicle's capability. Smoke launchers with options for tear gas or mustard gas could bolster close defense. To accommodate these changes, the cabin would need NBC, nuclear, biological, chemical protection. Increasing visibility with additional prisms and adding spikes to deter climbing could make it more challenging to swarm or ram the vehicle. Lastly, implementing remote control could remove vulnerabilities associated with the operator. However, adding reliable full remote controls and ensuring operation from a safe distance, possibly with a hovering drone for third-person view, would be a complex engineering task. These ideas are not intended to endorse or encourage such actions, but rather to explore constructive possibilities in a hypothetical context. Please do not build the improved Killdozer 2.0.